Hi, I'm Bill Carr with the Pennsylvania Game Commission. I'm going to demonstrate deboning this deer, which I harvested this morning, as an alternative to uh, dragging the deer out. We're going to debone and pack it out. With me today is State Game Warden Kirk Miller, who will assist with this process. Yeah, what I like to do is start the deponing process by first removing the back strap from one side of the animal. I've positioned the deer so that the peak of the back is, you can see it's off the ground. So there's a little bit of a downhill here. By positioning with the legs down, it just kind of rolls the back up nice so it's easier to make this cut and you're not cutting right against the ground surface. The other thing to consider, there'll be less hair shed if you follow, follow kind of like with the grain of the hair. The hair's kind of pointed back along the backbone. So your cuts, by starting them here and working down towards the tail, you're going to shed less hair than coming against it, which will cut and shed more hair all over your meat. So in order to keep it clean, I like to start here at the base of the neck and right at the top of the back, just make that cut. And I'm not digging the blade in, it's a surficial cut. And as you can see, I'm just riding along with that rounded blade and pulling it out. By cutting from the inside out, it's also causing less hair to shed off the animal. Whereas if you're cutting through, you're cutting the hairs and parting all those hairs, it really makes a mess on your meat. So you want to take a little bit of time here and not go too quickly in order to keep it clean. Stop all the way down to the tail. There we are. On this part I will go the other way, but only on the neck cut. And what I do is I just bury the blade and pull straight up from underneath. And any hair that comes off with that cut is just going to fall right onto the ground. And if you zoomed up real close, you'd see it's, it's pretty clean. There's very little hair actually touching the meat. Alright, now I'm just going to free up some of this hide. And just pull it back and roll it up over the animal. You can see it's still pretty fresh. So it's very easy to skin that right up over. In order for this to roll over, I am going to cut at the neck below the ear here, just so that hide rolls up over, over the deer a little, little nicer. Okay. There we are. Same thing on the back end. What I'm going to do here is right where the white meets the brown, that's where I like to make my cut, and just run it right down the leg this tendon that's here exposing all this meat here. So I'm just going to cut around the base of the tail here and I'm just going to make this cut close to the tail and I'm going to connect with that cut I made when I when I removed the anus and cut around it. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make this cut and just continue down along until I get to this tendon here on the leg. Rolling back the skin, exposing all the good meat. The most important thing is, you know, take your time. It's not a race. You want to keep the meat nice and clean and free from hair. All right, that's nice and exposed now. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to reposition myself and I'm going to extract the back strap or the uh, the loin. All right. The first cut of meat that we're going to remove is, is the loin situated right along the back here and you can actually feel the bone, the backbone right here and you're cutting right along that backbone on the top side of it to remove the top loin. So this is really good meat here so you want to be careful to try to keep your blade tight to the spinal ridge. There's a series of bones that are going to stick off the spine pointing straight up and that's where that loin is situated. So I'm just chasing chasing those that, that ridge. Okay, that should suffice. And at some point you're deep enough that it's going to stop because you're actually hitting ribs. 
and that's where I'm at now. Now on the back side here, you're going to feel a little bone. You'll feel everything's going to be kind of soft and you're going to feel a really hard bone that's always going to make contact with the outside edge and that's what I'm touching right here. I can feel a hard bone and that is where that loin ends. So that's where you want to cut on the front side of the deer, on that side of that bone, and then a slight angle towards, towards the pelvis. So I'm cutting on the inside of that bone, and it also comes down, there's a little peak right here, and that's the cut I'm gonna make. This important cut, if you didn't remove the entrails or field dress the deer, removing this is a spot where you can actually perf, perf the uh, intestines inside. So I would advise if it's your first time, probably best to eviscerate the animal and field dress it completely until you really get the hang of this and then the field dressing wouldn't really be required. You can easily do this without removing the guts from the animal. <coughs> so I'm doing because I don't want to waste any meat. I'm just working around the little bumps in the spine here and trying to free up that loin. But once you get it started, it's easy, like if you pull on this, this is very tender meat it's easy to cause tears and things. So you want to be a little delicate with this process. It, when the meat sets up, if the deer was here for more than a couple hours, this meat would set up and cool. And you could be a little bit more aggressive with the meat, which most of your processors would be more familiar with that when the meat is set. When you're deboning an animal, you got to be a little bit more delicate not to tear that muscle fiber apart. So that's why I'm cutting and not yanking like you would in a basic butcher shop you would just yank on this and it would come out nicely without falling apart. So, just taking my time here. Trying to get all of it. This is argu arguably the best part of the deer. And then I just take that little bit of connective tissue. When I get up in here, I'll just hold this up and work my way down. And it'll start to taper off. And I'm just chasing that little bone, bony pocket. And at the end, I could just pull it, and the tail will just come out. That's your entire loin removed. A lot of guys will call this the back strap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bag this. If you could bring that bag over. This is a basic deboning. A lot of guys will use this to quarter deer cheesecloth bag. They're you know, usually sold as a a four pack you want to get the that's the deer size one it looks a little large but that gives you the option if you wanted to some guys like the quarter and they'll actually put like a whole hind quarter in there or front shoulder but we're just going to take the meat so it's just like a big pillowcase just drop it in there okay so the next cut we're going to do is i'm going to debone the hind quarter i'm just going to free up a little bit more of this hide here all right, where I like to start on the hind quarters, a lot of different ways that you can do this, of course, but this is a, a method that has worked for me over the years. I like to identify this line that you see, this defined line, even on a very fatty end. This is a lean animal, so it, you can really see how pronounced it is, but this is always evident. The fat is mostly gonna be up here, but this is a great place to start, so you can see the difference in the muscular. What you're looking at, looking at here in the musculature is the, uh, this is what you call the eye around this lighter little strip here, and that is connected to the top of the round. And then this line here between the top of the round and the sirloin is where I like to make that first cut. And you're gonna see, I'm just gonna cut right along that line, just open it up. And just by making that cut, you can see I can slide between the two main muscles here. And that'll help me identify, even if you're not familiar with how these muscles are situated, you can explore with your finger, your finger won't tear through the meat it's gonna tear through that that not as dense you know connective tissue between the two muscle groups so what i'm doing is i just made that separation and take this up a little further and chase it see i am cutting through so i can feel it and that's how you know where to make the cuts so you can see how i expose that just like that and now i'm going to i'm going to cut this off along the lower part of the leg doing doing the same method you see where my finger comes through right there that's where you make your cuts and just expose that muscle. We're gonna take the whole muscle group. And like I said, this is the top of the round connected to the sirloin, and that's what I'm gonna remove first. I'm just gonna keep that nice and whole. The reason I like to do this is because 
there is there is some there's one large lymph node in here oh I see it I'll show that to you in a minute okay so the next thing I like to do is make this cut right here on the top of the round so it's the second line over I leave these two connected and and that's there you go make that cut and you're gonna find that that eye of the round is kind of gonna loop up under the leg See all my hand sliding in there? And that end of it is right here, right where I'm grasping. And I'll just slide up under the skin and separate it. So that was the tip of it. Now that's exposed. I've got that entire muscle group. So that's the eye of the round. It's exposed, same thing. I'm gonna come up, that's a piece of the bone. So I'm just gonna go right around that. Separate it. Clean it up real nice, tight to the bone. There you go. That's one of the three main big muscle groups that's in your hind quarter. We're gonna bag that. So one of the benefits of using your hand as a guide through there rather than exploring with a knife or just cutting through the meat and hacking and, and removing it quickly is because you're able to leave the glandular tissue in there preserved. So you don't want to expose the stuff that's inside that glands, especially if you're in a CWD area. This allows you to cut around the glands very easily and not exposing the meat to uh, prions or something that might be more concentrated in that glandular tissue. So what we did here by exposing that, I can take this off and that's one of your lymph nodes. You can see it in there. I'm not going to cut through it, but it's in there. There's, there's actually one small lymph node right there in that fatty tissue. So that's just something I'll just toss aside so I don't cut through it. Okay. So the next thing I like to do just to make this process a little easier is there's this main muscle that comes off the back of the leg. And I'll just cut through, through this right here. You know where the tendons start to turn more into meat. And I'll just remove that. It just gives me a little bit more visibility. You can see that just exposes more of that bottom round. So that can go in the bag. Okay, the next step in the process is there's a small little roast of meat situated right at the top of the back here. I'm going to remove that. And same thing, I'm just feeling with my hand. So I'm not cutting into anything I don't need to be. I'm just going to separate that nice and easy. And now you'll be able to see that bone where I started the removal of the, uh, of the back strap. The, top, the loin on top. So that's pretty much all you got right there. I got right through there. And that's it little piece of meat situated right here. Removed. Yeah, go in the bag. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just chase along the, egg, the leg bone with the knife and I'm gonna free up this sirloin. So you can feel that tight bone. That's the knob right there, the knuckle where it connects to the pelvis. And I'm just chasing right along the top side of that bone. And when I get down the joint here. Just gonna cut around, pick it up. Just keep going around that bone. You'll see in a minute what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna free up at this joint down here so I can take this leg that I just cut around and pretty much just flop it up without taking it, because the skin and all this is going to get in the way. So I just make a cut right here, right here, underneath, just kind of round. If I can get that. That's not working. I don't know why. You know I've done it. There we go. So I'm just going to cut around that. You don't have to do it this way. 
but this is just what I choose to do. Front leg's a lot easier. Okay. leg bone I just got it out of the way so I can access all this muscle now I'm just gonna go along and remove this sirloin and here's where you want to be careful is to not if there were guts inside the animal the stomach membrane is very thick here if you go through it with a knife you're gonna get gut material in with your meat, so you want to be delicate there. Okay, there's a sirloin. Now I'm just going to remove this bottom round. Alright, now this is somewhat connected, so you're going to have to cut separating the two bottom rounds. This is pretty much where the two cheeks meet. So I'm just going to make one cut down through there, stop on the bone, and cut right through. Okay, and then right here, it's almost like a triangle shaped bone in the pelvis. You can feel it when you're doing it. You can see, I'm going to trace the triangle with my finger, so you're just going right along the edge, not to waste any meat. You see I just chased, chased the bone. And that's it. That's the bottom round. Get this little piece of meat right here. Removed, there you are. Just gonna take this extra little piece that came off. There we are. Just throw that in there. So that's your hind, hind quarter deboned on one side. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this meat. A little bit extra for the grinder. That's what I like to do with it. Just take it off all as one piece. Just pretty much just cutting right around the bone. Gonna move up to the front shoulder and the neck. Okay, what I like to do is this front leg just kind of gets in the way because of the length. I like to just remove it. What I do is I just bend the leg, cut that front, cut one side, the outside, get that connective tissue, do a little cut here, and then I just If you fold it in half like this, and like that, it comes off nicely. Okay. And off to the side. Now I won't be tripping on it. It'll be a little easier when I'm skinning it out. That leg won't get in the way, similar to what we did on the back there. not to get the hair on the meat. And I'm just going to go along the back side of the front leg here. Same thing as we did back there where the white meets the brown. OK, 
Okay. You can see it's contacting the ground, but there is skin there. It's keeping the meat nice and clean. By laying the hide out like this, it's a nice clean area to work. So, on the front shoulder, there's a bone that comes out to the very outside edge, and that's what I'm seeing right here, this white line, you can feel it. You know, it, it's hard when you push on it. So there's two pieces, two good muscle groups in that front shoulder that you're gonna flay off on either side of this little ridge that produce, protrudes from the scapula on the shoulder. We're just gonna cut along that. And it's actually gonna stop on bone. You're not gonna cut through the animal because the front shoulder is not connected. So what I'm doing, just chasing it along the bone, just filleting it off. This is primarily meat that I just, this is where my ground meat comes from. That's where this goes. So there's no real wrong way to do this. Just get all the meat off. And I usually take a little bit of the belly meat. It starts getting real thin and layered in there with fat, and it doesn't really taste too good there. But I will chase it a little ways off that first cut. That could go in the bag. All right. And the same thing on the front end of that scapula. So I'm just riding right along the inside edge of that bone there, a the little hard ridge. Eventually you hit the end of the scalpula. Come around. Just chase the bone. Let's go in the bag, thank you. Now the lower part of the leg, just a couple little pieces of meat. I'm gonna take those off. That. there. Here's your brisket. That's where I'm at right now. Just take some of that brisket meat off. I can go right in the grinder. There you go. Little pieces there for you. Okay. And the last is get a little bit of. Nice thing is, you can see I got a little bit of dirt on that, but there's so much exterior connective membrane that I could just clean that up without losing any meat. So I'm just going to take that outer membrane off, peel it back, clean that up real nice. So you can see what I'm doing right there. See? So even though it touched, it was like, oh, it had some leaves and some dirt on it. I can get it right back to clean very easily just by removing some of that membrane. This once again, stuff you want to grind for your burger or make your sausage or get some of your smoke products out of it, bologna and such. There you go. 
far. Just a little bit more on there. There we are. Okay. Right, that's the front shoulder deboned. And now we just have this one piece in the neck. And here's where you also want to be. Take your time with it. There's a lot of there's a lot of lymph nodes that are gonna follow along here, but they're primarily concentrated along the throat of the deer and not in the muscles. So you don't want to cut through those lymph nodes releasing whatever's inside of them. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna get rid of this because there is meat underneath the shoulder, which I'm gonna show you now. There's a little piece right underneath here. It's not much, but I take it off anyway. This is a nice lean dough. There isn't going to be much trimming on it. And the idea is we're not trimming it up, we're not removing all the fat. That stuff, if you want to do it, you can do it at home. Primary thing is get it out of the woods and get the meat chilled. Uh, one trick I have, like if you get something like this in the early season that works very effective, you might be concerned about flies getting on, on your deer. We're fortunate today it's a little cooler. One thing that works really well is situate your gut pile so that it's downwind of you. When the flies smell that gut pile, they're going to concentrate in the gut pile and probably not come up to where you're at. And the other thing you can do is, as a last resort, is pre-season your meat, so to speak. Cayenne pepper, black pepper, just sprinkled on your meat bag or on the top of the carcass while you're doing this. The flies won't land on your meat, they won't lay eggs. So it's a nice trick out west that you know a lot of elk hunters and things will use here for doing the same thing with white tails. It's it's just another option to keep the yellow jackets and flies off of your meat and allow you to work. So on the on warmer days, I'll always keep a little film oh those old film canisters. I know they're hard to come by nowadays, but I keep a little film canister with that in it to sprinkle on the deer in case I can find myself in that situation. You're going to run into a lot of vertebrae in the neck here. You're going to feel that hard vertebrae and just cut around it as best you can. I'm sure a surgeon could get all the meat off between that vertebrae and end up with a, maybe a golf ball sized portion of extra meat. But just doing the best you can. That's about all you need to do. And then just avoid you getting into those glands which I'm going to show you. See I just filleted the top side of that neck. And I didn't see any lymph nodes. Always inspect the meat. It'll appear as little lumps. I don't want that in there. So that's a nice clean piece of meat. That can go in the bag. And that's your entire left side of the deer deboned. All right, so if you look here, I just wanted to expose so you'd see what these lymph nodes that I'm talking about. Here is one of them. They tend to be located along the esophagus and this little bit of connective tissue that surrounds the esophagus and the trachea and they'll start up in the base of the neck. There's two primary ones right here underneath my finger that are just at the back of the uh, back of the jaw and where all this comes up, you know, where the uh, esophagus and trachea come up in. And I'm just going to show you what one of these look like. They're usually a little bit brown in color to yellow and that's it. Like that's about a bean size lymph nodes. Sometimes you'll find them more like a lima bean size. That'd be more like just a regular like stream bean size. So or pea size and inside there if I cut in through it it'd be just brown inside and yeah and now you know what they look like and there's a bunch of them in here like I see another one in here it's a little bit larger see and there's no reason to really mess with them and get it all over your meat so by leaving all this lymphatic tissue meaning the lymph nodes you know the brain the two large lymph nodes here the entire spinal column you're leaving all the high risk CWD parts in the woods and you're taking all the low risk parts which is just meat 
and by not cutting it any bone I mean, you know, I'm cutting around the knuckles and things like that I'm not exposing the meat to any of those synovial fluids which is what kind of lines the spinal column and that you'll find at the base of the neck so the last thing I want to do in this process is make this disconnect at the head which I'm going to do final with this blade uh, before I do the meat because you know you're exposing your blade and you're releasing you know potentially prions and the and the fluids that are contained within the spinal cam ca the spinal column and the brain stem so oh. so this way you don't have to deal with disposal the other benefit to doing this as you can see the hide stays here so all the ticks all the little creepy crawlies that'll end up in your car or your garage is staying at the kill site you're not taking it home you know they're not they're not going to get in your car and you're just less likely to be exposed so that's the other reason I really like to prefer to leave the hide in the woods you know, they're just a bonus advantage of doing it this way so now what we do is we just flip over the deer and do the exact same thing now when you flip it this is all deboned we're done on this side so this can get dirty it's not going to dirty any of your cuts because you'll see you know when I flip this over that you know the hide protected everything and kept it clean I like to situate the deer so it's facing uphill it just gets that backbone up a little higher you can see how that did if I did it the opposite way I'd be cutting right against the ground I'm just feeling for that bone and it's it's you can't miss it it is really hard just cutting there a little bit of an angle just to get that tight tail of the loin slice along the back Easier because it's laying on the ground cooling, apparently. 
you see the difference when you're dealing with the meat that's set up a little bit how easy that came out compared to the other side bit of a refresher looking for that nice little line not the one that's by the eye around not top around it's between right here do it the same way as the other side Just use my hand Hi. See. This is why I prefer this tiny little blade because it's just so easy to get in there on the top side of your thumb and work. I just this is my preference. You might feel different, but don't be afraid to give it a try. You might like it. Right here I'm just avoiding that lymph node that I showed you before. I can see it right here in that in that pocket. And I gotta make that cut for that eye of the round. So there it is. Right along the line. You can't miss it. Remember it loops around a little bit. There's a little part that hooks up underneath. So I feel where that end is. Just get my blade in there and separate it. And if you cut it, that's okay. You just get it off with this main muscle here, at the top of the leg. Just always remember, this is what messes people up sometimes. The pelvis has the little triangle piece here that you need to cut around. So it's easy to miss some really good meat there if you don't work the knife around that little that little triangle shaped piece to the pelvis when you're making these cuts. There you go. All right. And there's that lymph node, the little mass right here. And it's right there with the main artery in the leg here. And I just like to just get that out of the way. Just gonna cut that off with the femoral artery. You can see it's about a straw sized artery. But it's void of blood. When people talk about that as a vital, you're pretty much shooting for a straw. It's not as big as a lot of people think. It takes some luck to hit that. It puts the deer down very quick. But, you know, that in the leg situated like it was, you got to be pretty darn lucky for that to be a vital hit. It's just something to think about if that's what you're shooting at for some reason. <coughs> okay, so once again. as before. Just a little faster. I'm not talking so I don't cut myself. Okay. All right, one other thing that I haven't mentioned in here, you'll notice when I'm cutting, my standard practice is to always try to cut away from yourself. You know, it's just a lot easier to cut your hands. You know, I'll teach you this in the Boy Scouts. Not everyone was a Boy Scout. I actually wasn't. Uh, but by cutting away it's a lot safer because when you're tearing through stuff trying to be aggressive it's just all air there's not legs you know fingers tend not to be in the way so that's just good practice is to cut away when you're doing something like this Remember, if you're going to experiment, typically I wouldn't gut the deer when I do this. Actually, I never do. I did for purposes today just to show you. But you want to be real careful, and I'm going to show you why in a minute because we're going to extract the tenderloins. Here. After I get this off. Like, how easy. Just a little cut here. I'm inside the deer. So you see right here same thing it's very easy to be inside the deer when you're removing this stuff and I'll show you that one because I mean, I'm actually going to show you right now uh, actually there is a little bit of meat there but it's not hard to get to the body cavity and that's all gut material so you really want to be conscious and have a good understanding of anatomy especially your first time so you don't perf into that and mix green gut material 
with your meat. So that's why it's always safer to just take those few minutes and gut it. I think so. But eventually you get good at it, you'll have the confidence not to have to do that. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this meat off the leg. I do it slightly different than I did before. this joint right where the hip meets the pelvis. Just gonna chase that bone right down to that next knuckle. Okay, cut them both sides of the bone, just like that, and we're gonna invert the leg right up on top and get it out of the way. this time before I broke the leg. That could be a little difficult at times, especially on a bigger animal. It's a mature doe. She put up a little bit of resistance. So since I have assistance, I'm gonna do it the other way this time. Let's hold that. Okay, just gonna put my foot right there. We're just gonna turn this bone right up and lay it over. You just it'll just pop just like see it's out of the way it's a little easier than trying to cut through all the parts of that is the bottom round. Of course you don't need to make that cut. It's already separated from the other bottom round. And like I said, there's a nice little piece of meat here. Just go right around that little triangle. Shape part to the pelvis, right tight to the bone. Just work right along the bone and free up that meat so there's no waste. If you're on the bone, you can't mess up. You're getting all the meat. It's a lot easier to do without without the anus there and the uh, the colon because I don't even have to worry about perfing that, cutting through it. I just need to free this up. So if you really took a close look at that, I mean there isn't really any hair on there, but sometimes you'll find it. So what I like to do is when I go home and I'm like, oh, it was in the dark. Maybe I got a little bit of hair on the meat. I'll take a you know a butane uh, you don't want to use map gas or something like that but a torch just like a handheld torch you're not taking the flame to the meat you're holding it off you're letting the heat just burn off all the hair and literally you'll just hear that hair just sizzle pop crack and just it turns to dust it's it's pretty flammable and that's a really nice way to clean up your meat quickly you just don't want to keep the flame too too close there actually is a uh, shrink wrap head that you can find sometimes that it connects to it, it makes a nice big hot fireball and you can just clean up the hair and it's gone. And that's what I prefer to do rather than pick. The one thing you don't ever want to do with meat is wash it. You don't want to take this stuff and wash it. If you're going to wash it, freeze it first, wash it before you're going to marinate or eat it because what it does is it introduces the bacteria deeper into the meat fibers. And what that bacteria will do as your meat is thawing is it'll start to replicate and multiply within your meat. So it's a lot cleaner to freeze a piece of meat that might have a little bit of dirt on. I'm not talking like gut material or anything like that. You should always cut that off if there is gut material on it, you know, the, the inner contents. And uh, that'll just keep it better table fare by using that practice. You know, so don't take a hose to it. Wash it after you freeze it and you're ready to eat it. So since we're back here, before I start on that next front shoulder, I'm gonna show you how to take out the tenderloins from the deer. So it's going to be real easy because I don't have any gut to work around since we eviscerated the animal, field dressed it. So what I'll do is I'll just come up 
you can see where the where the backbone ends and there's a little pocket. I'm just gonna cut along that and I can make that nice little cut there. And I can go right in here. And if you came from this other angle, right here you can see that tenderloin, that's what's sliding out right here from underneath the backbone. And I can just remove that very easily. And I even do this with the gut still in the animal. Even on animals as large as an elk, it's pretty easy to, to get this out. So continuing from a different angle with the camera, we're just gonna remove this tenderloin. It's very tender meat, hence the name of the tenderloin. So this is one part you wanna be pretty delicate with. You can really tear this up if you start yanking on pulling. I prefer to just chase along the top of the spine with a knife to try to get this out whole. That's it, that's your tenderloin from one side. I should have removed it in hindsight from the other side when we did it. It's still going to be clean because of where it's situated is protected by the, the membrane of the, uh, you know, the belly, belly meat here. So I'm going to have to get that from the other side before we leave. But that's what people say. And I would agree that that is the best cut of meat, especially the technique we use by not getting any urine on it. You'll find it'll taste a lot better. Okay. One thing you want to avoid, as you can see, you know, due, due to the trauma from the bullet impacting on this side, you're going to have a lot of blood and tissue that's damaged from that. And you want to be real careful with that because as the bullet expands, it can lose pieces that fragment inside, inside this muscle tissue that you're pulling off the shoulder. So you want to make, you want to kind of assess if it's blood that migrated from the back like this one did, or if it's trauma caused by bullet contacting the bone and exploding, you really want to avoid eating that meat because it's going to have some lead constituent to it if you're using leaded ammo. If you're not lose using leaded ammo, it could have sharp edges on it. So it's all things you want to consider when you're processing your animal. You want to cut around that. You want to be ultra cautious. You know, in that situation, you really can't save all the meat. You want to just think about your safety and not damaging your teeth or having to try to digest a piece of copper. So this really damaged tissue, I'm cutting around to avoid that. I'm not using leaded ammo. The reason I don't use leaded ammo is because birds of prey come on this carcass and start feeding. It doesn't take much lead to kill that bird because of the digestive system of the bird pretty much pulverizes that lead and releases all of it into its bloodstream. And it doesn't take much to kill a hawk or something that would feed off of it. So the other thing you can do is if you do find something that's like, you might want to take that shoulder, remove it, maybe hide it off to the main side, and that would keep birds from eating it. And most likely a scavenger like a coyote or something that it wouldn't affect would end up eating that. So that's the one thing I like to do. If the shoulder was hit and I was using leaded ammo, I would cut it off and set it off to the side so that the birds didn't feed on it. And if you need it, like, see, there's a piece I want to trim up a little bit. Here's a nice clean cutting surface. You know, by exposing that rib cage, I can come in here and just trim some of that damaged meat away. Or just that real bloody stuff that's going to stain through that sack. By having all this blood there, I don't really want that because that's going inside my pack. So by just having the meat, and once I double bag that, I'm not going to have much bleed through surprisingly pretty clean even when you look at that sack even the one layer I really don't have any blood coming through but you start putting stuff like this in that it's gonna look very different that whole sacks gonna turn red so that's why I'm trimming some of this stuff off
gonna get an assist from you here. Just gonna take the shoulder, invert it, and lay it lengthwise against it. Hold on, let me, let me get the height off here. Get up a little bit. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Oh no. Okay. Look like maybe something was going on right there. That was just looked very brown. Thought it was a wound. It's not. off the brisket. Yeah, that's, I would call that leaded meat mostly. There isn't too much we could salvage. There's a nice little clean piece here I'm going to take off. The rest of that could have some debris and stuff in it from the bullet, so we're going to leave that. But I am going to take this nice clean meat that's not damaged. this we'll just throw that in the bag we'll come back and hold this and we'll take this leg meat off okay Gonna set this right on top here, that's nice and clean. Just watch it in case it starts to slide off. Okay, we can take that. Not one piece here yet. It's still good meat there. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. The other side of that really has a lot of damage from the impact of the bullet. Head up. Yeah, it's cleaning up nicely. Pretty good. We just have the other tenderloin. Yeah. I'm just gonna extract this other tenderloin I forgot to take out previously. There it is. This big tenderloin. At this point, we have successfully deboned this animal. And you can see, I could easily lift this. That's all the edible portions of this deer in one bag of meat, which is a lot easier to carry out of here than dragging this whole animal for a mile. So and that's actually how far we are in today. We're about approximately straight line. If we walk back to the truck, we'd be about a mile in. What I'm gonna show you now is how to remove the head and leave all the other parts here. So I'm gonna show you how to do this using only a knife, no saw required. So what we're gonna do is right here at the base of the head. If you take the head, it's your first time doing this, you're not sure 
you can kind of feel right here where the head pivots, where it's connected to the spinal column. You can just feel where that where that point is. So and that's where I'm going to make the cut with my knife. Cut on top. Most of your connective tissue is going to be on top of the head, and then also here at the base of the neck. I'm just going to cut through esophagus, trachea. Okay, so I stop on that bone, and I can actually see the brain stem, and this is the part that would be submitted for testing. So you can see when I completed the cut through all that neck tissue, you can see this little pocket right here. That is the base of the skull, and right there is the brain stem, and that is the part that would be tested for CWD. So at this point, now that I've cut the top connective tissue and the bottom, just simply a little twist and a pop and the brain stem is soft enough that you don't even need to expose your knife to that brain material or actually just this little bit of connective tissue here would complete your cut and the head's attached and you can see right here that is the part that they would actually test so what I'm going to do at this point leaving the tag attached I'm going to take this head get my bags that I have over here and I'm just going to double bag it. Just in here, keep the tag, tie it off. Okay, gloves off. I have another bag right here. I'm going to put, put it inside of there so that none of that material spills out into my pack have two layers of protection to keep my pack nice and clean. And I like to keep it separate from the meat that way I don't have to untie the bag. And that's pretty much it. back at the truck. That wasn't too bad. Truthfully, I actually managed to do it without stopping. It really wasn't too bad. The straps on the stand aren't exactly the best. Uh, the backpack, having it in the pack with the belly band around makes the pack out a lot easier. But then you got to keep in mind you're not carrying a whole deer. That bag, if I had to guess when I picked it up before, maybe it's 40 pounds of meat approximately. So yeah, it's highly advised. Give it a try. You won't regret it. Might change your life, might save your back. So, good luck. <laughs>